Let's knit two color fair isle. Today we're making a cowl. Welcome back to another yarn inspirations tutorial. I'm your host Kristen Mangus of Good Knit Kisses. Let's get started. In today's tutorial, you'll need a bulky number five weight yarn. We're using Peyton's Alpaca Blend, color Black Cherry for contrast A, and color Birch for contrast B. The basic two color fair isle requires no new techniques beyond the basic knit stitch. So when we're working in a circular fashion, all you need is the main knit stitch in the body of your work and then you may need a brim or edging um, for hats and cowls. But basically all you need to know is the knit stitch and we'll be holding yarn for our accent in the back. Now it develops a, a color straining in the back with some floats, but I've got a technique here where there's not these long floats of of, uh, color that your um, ring or anything else can get caught up in. So I'll be teaching that to you in this tutorial. You're going to need your yarn. I've got one ball of Peyton's Alpaca Blend color Black Cherry. It's a bulky five weight yarn. And then our accent for contrast B is color Birch from Peyton's Alpaca Blend. You'll also need uh, a stitch marker and your tapestry needle for weaving in the little tails. And then we need our circular knitting needle. Today I'm using a US 11 or 8 millimeter circular needle with a 24 inch cord. So be sure and get your supplies together and go click on the link in the description below to get your pattern. Let's begin. Let's start by casting on. We're going to make a knitted cast on today and because my needles are a little dark for this yarn I'm just going to switch them to something lighter. So make whatever cast on you'd like. I prefer the knitted for this particular pattern. I'm just going to start by making a slip knot however it works for you and slip that onto my needle that I normally would hold all that knitting in. And then we're going to insert into the first stitch. Okay, so we're knitting directly on here and we're not actually gonna be moving anything over to our other needle. I'm gonna go ahead and yarn over just like you're pulling through a knit stitch. And then you don't drop it off, you just twist around and pick it back up with that same needle that had that first stitch on it. So we drop it off on there. So now we have two stitches on our needle. We're just going to continue across, insert into there, yarn over as a knit stitch, pull through, twist, and insert our needle and drop it off. Let's do that again one more time. Insert, yarn over, pull through, twist, insert. There we go. So I've got four stitches on here. You're going to continue and when we meet back up, we will join it in the round. For our cowl, we're going to cast on 84 stitches. Pause your video and I'll see you soon. Now let's connect in the round. On this particular cord length, it's actually too long uh, for this demonstration purposes, but I also want to show you how to make a magic loop. So the magic loop, all it is is that you're squeezing it together between two stitches that are further away from where your needles are, and you just pinch the cord and then feed it through, and this is that extra cording. So that way I can get my knitting in the round and work with something longer. So if you don't have the right cord length, that's okay. If you do have the right cord length, it might be a little tight when you first start, and then after you get a few rows of knitting, that in the round will work much better. So in order to connect it, we're just going to push our stitches to the ends of our needles here and have your stitch marker ready. And I'm just gonna pick off that first stitch on that needle and then I'm gonna pick off that next stitch with my needle I just took it from, took one from, and we're just trading, okay? And then I'm just making uh, the first stitch on both needles, the one from the opposite. And then right before I uh, start knitting, I'm going to throw on my stitch marker to indicate my first stitch of the round. So now this is where you can start your knitting. Let's work our ribbing. We're going to knit the first stitch, just as usual, pull that through and drop off the old. Okay, that's the first stitch. Now we're going to put our yarn to the inside or the front of our work and pick up that stitch from the front leg and purl. We're going to yarn over and push through that stitch to the back. And if you need a slower video on the purl stitch, uh, click on the link in the description below for a, a slower video. And we're going to put the yarn to the back again and we're going to knit. So this is a one by one ribbing and we just alternate moving our yarn to the back or the front and knitting or purling. You're just gonna do that all the way around until you reach this last stitch. So pause your video and I'll meet you back up when you completed that round. See you soon. 
a quick tip on magic circle when you're coming to that last stitch uh, you are going to find that you've got all this extra cord now so I would go to the back of the needle that has all those extra stitches on it and then go ahead and feed through your cord there and pull through all that slack to get it ready for the next stitch that way you've got as much stitches as possible that you can work before you have to move that cord along okay continue knitting along and also on this particular video if you're working on the cowl you'll notice this is very small it's because I'm actually working a hat at the same time and uh, this video will be the same for that it may not be up at the particular time of this video but you can click on the link below and check back anytime see you soon all right, I'm coming to the end of my row uh, round one and I've got this last stitch but it may be hiding underneath your stitch marker because these were very close before so just move that stitch marker aside purl the last stitch and then you'll just slide the stitch marker over just slide it on over like this okay and then now you're ready to move on to the next round so make sure and uh, get your stitch marker and don't let it trap in when you go to the next round otherwise you're gonna um, it's gonna be stuck on there uh, like where you wrap that around and it's in the back or something all right so you're gonna continue moving on and we're going to knit purl in around until you have four rows of rib stitch and pause your video I'll meet you back up when we get to that point See you soon. Okay, so now you're just going to knit the next two rounds all the way around. So you're not going to be purling at all from this point out, and you will be uh, getting it set up to work your first set of Fair Isle. So knit the next two rounds and pause your video and meet me back up uh, when you've completed that. See you soon. All right, let's work on our Fair Isle. This is a four stitch repeat in the round, and then it's actually a four round repeat or four row repeat um, in, in height. So we're gonna be working around with the Fair Isle or color stranding, and then drop our secondary yarn and work just with our main yarn for one round. And then the next round on the third, we'll be shifting it over and then repeating again with just uh, working with one color on the fourth row. So second and fourth rows is color A only. So the first one, we're going to go into that first stitch and pick it up. Now you can pick up the stitch however you're comfortable with knitting the first one, but I want to show you a special technique here in a second. So let's go ahead and pull up this first stitch here. Okay, so now you've got the first one in. Let's insert in the second stitch and have a little chat about how to hold your yarn. Now I've got this really long tail. Don't worry about that for now. Uh, I've got in my right hand, I'm English style knit knitting and I usually throw it over like this. If you are continental knitter, you are holding it in your left hand. Now, if you can knit with continental and English, this is perfect for you. Or if you want to try it, you can totally do it in this, uh, this technique here. And it works really fast once you, once you understand it and get going. Uh, this technique is holding the accent yarn uh, continental and holding your main yarn uh, English style. So for the next stitch after you make that first one, we're just going to um, yarn over as usual with English style going around and knitting one with A. Then the next one, what we want to do is trap in or catch this um, B yarn in behind A because we're going to be working for three stitches in A. So I'm just going to go underneath B back here, held in the back, and then I'm going to wrap around with A and then pull it on through. And what happens is you'll see that this B kind of slides off the needle and it doesn't actually go through with A, and then we just let it lop off in the back, and you can see it hanging on. Then we're just gonna catch it in there by knitting one more in A, and you see how in the back it's now caught, and we don't have a long color strand, and we are totally set up to um, yarn over with B, so instead of dipping underneath our needle, we're actually going to be wrapping around the needle and then pulling it on through, and now you have your next stitch. So that is the next one for your repeat. So we've already done one entire repeat and we're gonna move on. So go into the next one and we're gonna knit one with A. And then before we knit with uh, A again, we're gonna dip underneath that uh, strand of B, yarn over with A and pull through. And now we're gonna catch it in totally by knitting one more stitch as normal with A. Do you see how that is? So you can actually um, throw um, both of these. You just need to keep your ball um, in the back for the um, 
for your accent out of the way. And then this, if you'll dip underneath that yarn back there, it will do that trap in method. Whether you hold them in, in one in each hand or you try and throw it and manipulate it. I wanna show you how fast, you can rewind and make that go slower. I'm gonna show you how fast it is for me once I get going and you can see how this can very quickly work your color stranded work. So that is four stitches there. So I'm knitting one, I'm catching it in the back, I'm knitting it again to finish trapping that, and then I'm yarning over and getting a knit stitch. And so I have just worked through two of these repeats here. So you're just gonna continue all the way around until you get to the stitch marker and then drop accent B and um, work with only A for one round. All right, pause your video and I'll meet you back up after you've done those two rounds. See you soon. So your knitting should look like this. It's gonna start looking like um, little um, Vs. Uh, if they're pulled out, that they, they will be kind of open at the bottom, but um, once your knitting kind of comes down, it gets a little more weight on it, they'll look like little closed up Vs or little hearts. And you're just gonna continue knitting this uh, in the four round repeat. You're going to work six repeats of these rounds and then work one more of that round seven to um, kind of mirror this beginning one. So it's basically about seven and a half. So on the cowl, you're going to have this brim here, and then you've got your um, seven repeats. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and it repeats, and then the seventh round, and so it's it's almost seven. And then you need two more rounds of uh, just the simple A, and then you're gonna do your section of ribbing again. So knit purl, knit purl for four rounds. So you just need to, it's basically gonna mirror this up. We're gonna have two rounds of solid and then the four rounds with the ribbing. And then I'll show you how to cast off. So pause your video and we'll meet back up for casting off the cowl. See you soon. We're ready to bind off or cast off, and we're gonna cast off purl-wise instead of knit-wise, so it's a little different. Uh, I want my chain that will appear when I make the bind off to appear on the inside, and it rolls to the inside, and it does, it won't be rolling outward. And I don't want it to roll outward, So, and I want it to uh, appear to match this knitted cast on a little bit more. So let's begin by, um, we're going to purl the first two stitches here. And here we go, make sure our yarn is forward on it. And you can go ahead and take off your stitch marker if you like. We're going to purl the first stitch and make sure that you're doing this loosely. Uh, you don't want to tight bind off or cast off on here. So we purl the first two stitches and then we take the first stitch that we did and go up and over that second stitch and that's nice and loose and then you do it again so we're just going to purl that stitch and then take that first stitch up and over to bind that off and so we just continue doing that loosely all the way around and uh, pause your video and work on that and I will meet you back when we're ready to finish the last stitch see you soon all right we're down to our last stitch and we're just going to work that just as we have been and knit that very last one over. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and cut our yarn. Let me elongate that stitch and cut our yarn. And I'm just going to pull it on through. And then we need to connect these points here. So let me move my things over. All right. So we want to get our tapestry needle out and connect it to the tail that you just cut. And we want to connect these two pieces here. So we're just going to um, study your, you can study your stitches a little bit to see where you should add that in. If you flip this over, you can see where the chain is that I was talking about earlier. So now you have this chain on the inside of your work. Do you see that? And so you're just going to insert into um, these stitches, kind of flip it over, and it's actually easier to see on the back and go through these two bumps here. And this is part of that chain and go around and then um, back through and then back through again and then that will close up that loop there and then you can just start um, weaving in uh, through this um, back here where we've got a rib so I'm just going to go into one of these ribbed columns and go around all the sides of these 
ribbed columns. Oops, go around and through. And then pull that on through and it helps it remain stretchy. And then um, you can go back up through here and uh, get in a few more stitches here and pull it on in and then that should be nice and secure and I like to go back through maybe one more time and let my tail be on the other end when I cut it. So now I've got that cut and then you just need to do your beginning tail same kind of thing and then the ones on the inside. Well, I hope you like making your fair aisle cowl today. On behalf of Yarnspirations and Good Knit Kisses, I'm your host, Kristen, wishing you happy knitting. Bye-bye.